Hi guys, Rian here and today I want to talk about the Everlasting Moon Glow. As you all know, Kokomi is sort of considered to be the worst 5 star character in Genshin at the moment. I can't disagree with this because I consider her a mid to low tier character, which is fine to be honest. Not every character has to be high tier. If every character has to constantly outdo each other on every banner, it will eventually lead to more and more power creep. In fact, I find it more enjoyable to mix in high tier characters with mid to low tier characters because it gives the game more variety. If Mihoyo decides to buff her, I'm more than happy and I don't think anyone would disagree she doesn't need a buff. She wasn't like Zhongli pre-buff where there were actually a large number of people who think Zhongli doesn't need a buff because he was a support. However, her performance is made worse with her iconic weapon. If her weapon was designed better, perhaps Kokomi wouldn't receive such backlash. Personally, I do not own this weapon because it is just bad. Even as a content creator, I cannot see myself spending few hundred bucks on this weapon. If anyone is looking for a technical review why the Everlasting Moonglow is just bad, Savvy who is a content creator I watched covered this very well and I will link her video down below. But my issue with this weapon is not just the damage numbers, but the design in general. The way Mihoyo is doing this is really dangerous for the future of Genshin. My biggest issue with Everlasting Moonglow is it's only usable on Kokomi. Yes, Barbara can use the Everlasting Moonglow but that is only to do more healing which isn't really important in Genshin. But in terms of utility or support capabilities that can buff the entire team, weapons like Trilling Tales of Dragon is way better than the Everlasting Moonglow. Since Kokomi is the only character whose damage scales with HP% percent, she is the only one who can convert the stats of this weapon into damage. But is this even the direction for Kokomi? If Kokomi was supposed to be a support, why give her a passive that increases her normal attack damage? This is what really gets me. If Mihoyo really wanted to make the Everlasting Moonglow a good DPS weapon for Kokomi, why didn't they just increase the normal attack damage by significantly more and just remove the healing bonus entirely? This way, other characters can also benefit from the normal attack damage and not just Kokomi. Even with a passive that increases your normal and charge attack damage by 40%, it will not really break the game when used by other characters because it has HP% percent main stat. The Everlasting Moonglow will not be the best in slot for all the other current Catalyst DPS in the game, but at least it will still be usable. With a passive like that, it will still be the best in slot for Kokomi while being a decent 5 star weapon for other Catalyst users. But giving it stats like healing bonus makes it seem like Mihoyo intentionally did not want this Catalyst to be used by other characters but healers. I find this an absolutely stupid design decision. That is just one option that Mihoyo could have done but didn't do. Another option for the iconic weapon that Mihoyo could have done is just make the Everlasting Moonglow a pure support weapon. Just ditch the damage of the weapon entirely and make it more of a support weapon, like a 5 star version of Trilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. I would have very much preferred this option over the DPS option if you ask me. In fact, I would even say the community would feel the same way. We all know Kokomi is a support, so let her iconic weapon amplify her support capabilities even further. What happened to the Millennial Movement series weapons? We have the Freedom Swan and the Song of Broken Pines that buffs the entire team's attack percent, normal attack, charge attack and plunging attacks. We also have the Allergy for the end that buffs the entire team's elemental mastery and attack percent. Why was there no continuation to this excellent weapon series? We're still lacking a Polam and Catalyst. Wouldn't a Millennial Movement Catalyst be perfect for Kokomi? We all know people usually want to roll for a 5 star weapon with crit rate, crit damage or attack percent. But for the Millennial weapons, we know it's a support weapon and it is the perfect opportunity to chuck in HP% percent as a main stat and people will still be satisfied. I really think Mihoyo missed a great opportunity to reintroduce the Millennial movement weapon here. It would have been such a great addition to Kokomi's kit and people wouldn't be judging her based on how much damage she does because her iconic weapon only gives her support capabilities. In fact, the color theme of the Millennial movement weapons which is blue matches Kokomi even more than purple. From what I can tell, Mihoyo just wanted to make a series of purple weapons for all the Inazuma characters. Look how awful the Miss Splitter looks on Ayaka. It really starts to scare me when Mihoyo designs a 5 star weapon just for one character and no one else in mind. It speaks about how greedy they can get. I'm pretty sure there are many people who will be pulling on the weapon banner for the Jade Cutter and ended up with the Everlasting Moonglow. They might not have Kokomi on their account, what are they gonna do? If you look at all the past 5 star weapons, at least they are still usable on multiple characters. Even weapons like Jade Cutter and Staff of Homa that scales with the character's HP works on any character because every character has a HP bar. They just don't scale as well as characters like Zhongli or Hu Tao. 
but I see this trend of 5 star weapons that I do not really like ever since the start of Inazuma patch. The weapons are starting to get less usable on more and more characters. Example, Misplater is only good on characters who can infuse their weapons with an element, which limits it down to Keqing, Ayaka and C6 Kazuha. But Misplater isn't even that bad, because the raw crit damage from its main stat is what people want. But after the Misplater, we have the Engulfing Lightning, which could only be used by Raiden and Xiangling. No other character really benefited from this 5 star weapon, but at least there are still 2 characters who are really popular that can use it. But finally, Mihoyo has done it. The Everlasting Moonglow is designed only for Kokomi, and this is getting from bad to worse. They could have at least made the Everlasting Moonglow somehow usable on other Catalyst users. It didn't need to be the best in slot, but they didn't. Another thing that I didn't like is how Mihoyo is putting healing percent on weapons. I feel healing stats should stay on the artifacts and hydro resonance. This way we can easily move our healing artifacts from one healer to another without much investment. But once you restrict it to a weapon, my Burnett or Diona cannot use the everlasting Moonglow. Does this mean Mihoyo is going to make more healing weapons for each weapon type? Please don't do that, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot. If you were to ask any seasoned Genshin player to design a 5 star weapon, I'm pretty sure they would be able to come up with a better solution than this. Look at other games, they actually allow their community to come up with weapon ideas. If any of you have played Team Fortress 2, you know the game always come up with new weapons during its peak. Some of these weapons are actually submitted by the community and implemented into very interesting and fun weapons. When it comes to character design, I think Genshin is doing a great job. But when it comes to weapons, I'm starting to see a pattern that I don't like. If you were to ask me to rework the Everlasting Moon Glow, this would be my design. I will not change the base attack and HP% percent main stat, only the passive. When the user uses their elemental burst, the entire team's attack% percent is increased by 30% of the user's bonus HP%. Percent. You can only get a maximum of 30% bonus attack from this buff. This means if Kokomi has 100% bonus HP from her artifacts and this weapon, she will be able to give the entire team 30% attack buff which is the cap. You might say, 30% attack is low right? Even Trilling Tales of Dragon is better. But you need to understand, while Trilling Tales can only buff one character, this is able to buff your entire team which is way better. For a character to get 100% bonus HP is quite easy. You will need to level up this weapon to level 90 and use only one artifact with HP% percent main stat. It can be your timepiece, goblet or circlet. Since this is a support weapon, support characters like Sucrose, Lisa, Barbara and Mona can easily use this and benefit the team. Even if you do not want to use a HP% percent artifact, the HP% percent from this weapon's main stat will already give you 15% percent bonus attack to the entire team, which is fair. As for the refinement for the whales, you can gradually increase the bonus attack cap from 30% to 35% all the way up to 50%. Anyway, this is my very premature design. The numbers and scaling may need to be changed for it to be balanced, but the concept is basically an upgraded version of Trilling Tales that buffs the entire team. As for how much it buffs the team, it will depend on the user's HP%, percent. hence why this weapon has a HP% percent main stat. I hope this video is able to bring awareness to the community. It is too late to rework the Everlasting Moon Glow, but I hope a weapon like this don't ever exist again in Genshin. And to those who didn't get their Jade Cutter, may your soul rest in peace. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching.